as ever I have uh, the um, delightfully cheery Dr. Richard Scott GP. Hello, Richard. Hi, and I'm still cheery. <laughs> Always cheery. Uh, cheery is good. Joy is a good thing. We need more joy in the world. Mm. And to share it with people. Right. So uh, if you're not from the UK, what's a GP? Well, a GP is a family practitioner in the US, a GP in the UK. He is your first point of call for that funny looking toe with a dodgy looking lump. He's the guy you're going to go to first. Uh, so we're going to talk about what this week, Richard? Um, well, we're talking about Alzheimer's disease. Um, and would you want to know in advance? So it's, it's, it's again, a hot topic. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, very, very relevant. So, yeah, that's where we're going. Okay. Do you, do you want to just go for it and give us what you've got? Sure. Okay. So um, I'll start, if you like, with a, a brief general introduction of, of health before moving on to the specific topic, because you'll see how it fits into um, health generally. So the NHS, National Health Service in the UK, uh, was set up in 1948 to provide free treatment for all. It was all about treatment. But over the years, it's become so much more. Uh, not least uh, preventing disease. Uh, and that's good because surely uh, prevention is better than cure. Um, but there has been some debate recently about whether the NHS shouldn't uh, go back and, and concentrate its energies on what it was originally designed for, which is treatment, leaving prevention uh, through health education, say in schools, adult education, even offices at work. Um, so, so far we've got cure, if you like, and prevention, but there's something in the middle which is called screening. And that's where you go looking for disease that hasn't actually uh, declared itself, but is there or potentially there. And so you, we do um, cancer screening through uh, bowel tests, uh, colonoscopies, et cetera, stool tests, uh, cervical screening, looking for uh, cervical cancer, mammograms for breast cancer. Again, because dealing with early disease is so much better than waiting for it to become advanced. Now, I love questions on this show, so I'm going to throw some out. Um, and here's one. Uh, with science exploding before our eyes, how many more diseases should we screen for? Say, you know, we've got a few already. What about another 10? Or what about 100? That's the first question. Number two, are tests always beneficial? Um, are they good for us? Um, and what about the cost implications? So that's number three. Um, and then really, and this is the big ethical one, you know, is screening always a good idea? In other words, are there some diseases it might not be better to or it might be better not to know about? Mm. Now, <laughs> that's a bit of a controversial topic, and it's certainly controversial for a doctor to say. But bear with me as we look at Alzheimer's disease. You'll you'll obviously get my angle on this and it won't be a universal angle. Um, and I think it's a, a, a big discussion point because it will be soon relevant to all of us. So we're looking at Alzheimer's disease, which is the commonest form of dementia. Um, what happens in Alzheimer's disease is you get a buildup uh, of two things in the brain. One is amyloid, which is a, a sort of ty type of protein that forms plaques, fatty protein forms plaques. And the second are what we call tau proteins, T-A-U proteins. And these are particularly bad guys and they cause tangles within brain cells. So there's tangling going around, affecting the ability of brain cells to function. You've got these two elements. Um, and that's what happens in Alzheimer's disease. And it's a diagnosis made not by GPs, by um, we, we might suspect that someone's got dementia. We then pass uh, patients on to uh, geriatricians, old age doctors and neurologists who make the decision formally, then pass the patients back to ourselves and we carry on the treatments. And there have been medicines going for 20 years or so. Um, Aricept is a common one. Danese pill is its more uh, proper name. I might say my mum uh, was on a Danese pill for many years. Um, and the reason it's prescribed is it slows down the progression of Alzheimer's by about six months. Now, the reason this is a hot topic is I was watching the TV just a couple of, I don't often watch the news, but I happened to switch it on and there it was, um, Channel 4 News proclaiming a wonderful breakthrough in medicine, which it is a good, great breakthrough. There's two new drugs on their way for Alzheimer's, which should help at the early stage by about 20%. Now, that's not enormous, but it's worth having. Bear in mind, there's currently overall 900,000 people with dementia in the UK, not all with Alzheimer's, but Alzheimer's is the biggest fraction. And probably by 2040, we think it'll be 1.6 million. This is a common disease. And of course, with terrible effects. 
So we've got discussions over not you know marvelously you've got these new drugs but how much are they going to cost and of course if you put money in that direction then you can't put your money into hip replacements and cataracts etc you know can we afford to treat patients or as some people would say can we afford not to treat patients so we've got a cost stuff um but what really got my got my interest on this particular uh topic which was before i watched the tv the other night um was that there was an article in the times newspaper uh, a week or so ago, entitled, Would You Take an Alzheimer's Test? I did, and it's unnerving. So a woman in her 50s taking an Alzheimer's test. And the nub of the article was really as follows. You know, all of us, as we get older, get a bit more forgetful. Now, I joke uh, that my wife, Heather, oh, where are my, where are my glasses? Where are my glasses? And so I, I tease her, and she realise I can't find my keys. <laughs> I write lists. I was writing one with just when Andy mentioned something to me before we came on air. I write lists because otherwise I'm going to forget. Other people who are a bit more techy set alerts, don't they, on their smartphones. Yeah, I need to get up at seven in the morning. Uh, I've got a meeting tomorrow, someone's birthday. You know, these are, this is a normal part of aging. I mean, kids do it when they're younger, but as you get older, it gets more important. Um, everybody, of course, is hoping not to get full blown Alzheimer's disease, full blown dementia. But here's where uh, a new Swedish study um, has become very important. So the Swedish study on this new blood test that's become available to detect Alzheimer's 10 or 15 years before the disease becomes apparent in terms of symptoms or signs. And often it's somebody else, a family member, a friend who spots that somebody is uh, you know, becoming uh, a bit uh, less, less good up top than they used to be, shall we say. So this blood test, if you like, is a biomarker for dementia because it's detecting the tau protein, the TAU protein in the blood. And it's very accurate, 97% accurate. It'll tell you therefore whether you're extremely likely to get the disease or conversely, whether you're very likely not to get the disease. So it's aimed at people in their 50s, 60s, 70s. Take the test if you like and know the future. And this Alzheimer's Society and people who are enthusiastic say this is going to revolutionise early diagnosis and care. Uh, the Alzheimer's Society, as I say, in England supports it strongly. There are other blood tests also being developed. They describe these as game changers for all types of dementia, not just Alzheimer's. And because, you know, it's all very well knowing you've got dementia, but otherwise it's like being told you've got cancer. Which type? Because the treatment varies depending on which one you've got. Um, so we've, we've got um, an amazing uh, opportunity to use a blood test, should we wish to. But here's the question for us, which I'm posing on your show, Andy, tonight. As this woman wrote in The Times, I'm just paraphrasing and adding a little bit of my own thoughts in as well, but this is what she said. The technology is available, or soon to be available, maybe only one or two years. Is it always a good thing? Do we want to know if dementia is on the way? Yes, say the Alzheimer's Society, with considerable enthusiasm. Um, it's far better than a definite diagnosis going beyond a, uh, the current diagnosis, which is mainly clinical. If you want to really know, you have to do what's called an amyloid PET scan or a lumbar puncture to demonstrate these abnormal proteins building up in the brain. But a blood test, so much easier, and of course, applicable to vastly more patients than these hugely expensive tests, which wouldn't be applicable to all. But my point, and I'm going back to it again, are we better off knowing the future or not here? Say you take a test in your 50s and discover you've got a 90% chance, 90% likelihood of getting Alzheimer's in 10 or 15 years time. Remember, the disease is incurable. We can help with these drugs, perhaps 20% reduction in severity or progression of the disease, but not 100%. So that you've got an incurable disease, which we can help slightly with drugs, sure and you can have the drugs without the blood test um, but if you know this is the future hmm, how do you then respond i can see many people having severe depression a massive you know my goodness what is this different say to discovering you've got a bowel cancer that's curable as i had praise god um in 2011 um, or something else that's curable yes of course there are cancers that are discovered late and they're incurable but you know the majority are still curable and that's wonderful news. So it's well worth knowing early. Is that still the case with 
Alzheimer's. I, I can see this causing a lot of misery. Um, so here we are, once two years away from this extraordinary new um, uh, progress in terms of disease. Now, I'm just going to give a plug to these two new drugs, uh, Lecanimab. There's lots of drugs ending in MAB, which are wonderful for reducing inflammation, autoimmune diseases, um, some cancers. And this is called Lecanimab and Donanimab. So slight benefit, you know, but still worth having, although hugely expensive. Um, but some great good news about the drugs, although expense is an issue. Blood test, I'm not at all so sure about. So I thought what I'd do, Andy, is just quickly go on to scripture. Always a good uh, reference point. Always and then uh, you, 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 you'll have jotted down a few questions. And I hope next time we, we speak, uh, your listeners will have a few questions as well. So what does the scripture say? Well, clearly scripture doesn't talk um, about Alzheimer's disease specifically. Um, you know, it wasn't uh, wasn't wrote, wasn't, well, wasn't wrote about in the Bible, you know, all those thousands of years ago. But there's a couple of uh, obvious passages that, that struck me immediately. One is you know, Matthew uh, chapter 6, uh, 25 to 27. Actually, I'll get you to read this out, and if I could, because uh, then the listeners get a different voice. Yep. So, uh, just switch um, your phone on. Yeah, switch your phone on. Um, Matthew. So Ma Matthew 6 and verses 25 to 27. Okay, Matthew 6, 25 to 27. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can Thank all you. your worries add a single moment to your life? Indeed. And of course, in terms of worrying, he's also applying in terms of food and clothing, not just today, but beyond, I believe, in that passage. You know, can worrying add a single day to your life? And could you also read the same, we'll say Matthew 6, now 33 to the end. Yep. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Thank you. And God is saying to us, I believe, you know, he, he knows what we need. Worry is useless. In fact, it's worse than useless. It's detrimental. And it's specifically taught against by Jesus here. Now, Paul takes up the same theme in Philippians 4, chapter, six, uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 onwards. He says, do not worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, present your request to God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will be yours. Now, I, I often quote this to my patients who come in with, with considerable worry, saying, you might think it's all very well for Paul to say that, you know, clever bloke, having everything going from, uh, hang on a second. He was in prison at this point. He had plenty to worry about, not least losing his head. Um, you know, Paul had plenty, of, and yet he said, no, 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 don't worry. He's saying, I'm choosing not to worry it's a choice um, but don't do nothing present your worries to god and i think what what i my thought about this blood test for alzheimer's which i suppose superficially sounds like a good idea like screening tests for other diseases is that what triggers this test if we're not careful is fear and anxiety about the future i believe it's fear driven this test um, and the bible it, you'll know this andy but the Bible speaks 365 times about do not worry. Isn't that amazing? That's no coincidence. Yeah. One for every day of the year, apart from this year, which is a leap year. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, 365 times, do not worry. But, but the, it never stops there. But give it all to God. You know, God is with you. God is with you. Do not worry. As he said to Joshua about to cross the Jordan, you know, do not worry, for I am with you. Um, and I think, you know, of course, we should take sensible precautions about our health. Paul himself, again, talks about physical health having some value, but spiritual health is more valuable. Trusting in God, obeying God, knowing that he alone controls our futures. Our futures are in his hands. You know, if we worry about Alzheimer's disease and worry about it, then we think, so you worry about it enough to take a test. You then take a test. There's going to be a gap before the result. You're then worrying about the result. 
without any doubt, Bila Shaka, as they say in, in Swahili, you're going to be worrying about the test, you're going to be worrying about the result. And then when you get the result, if it goes badly, oh my goodness, you're then worrying for the next 10 or 15 years until you get Alzheimer's when you can do very little about it, apart from take medicines, which to be honest, you could have had if, if and when your Alzheimer's, you know, Alzheimer's declares itself without all the worry along the way. It's, it concerns me. Now, fear is not all bad. And I'll, and I'll just remind us about Proverbs 1. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear or awe, being awestruck by God's amazingness and having the right relationship with our creator is a good thing. And of course, you know, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is a good thing. We should desire it. Proverbs gives us loads of wise advice about how to live well and live long, I might say. Living well and long, of course, is what anybody wants to have. And that's, of course, the concern that we have and possibly leading us to have these, these potential tests that may just be around the corner. I'm sure anybody who's worried enough to have an Alzheimer's test, if you said to them, would you like to live well and long? Yes. Is it about an Alzheimer's test or is it about a right relationship with God? I would, I would challenge them. It's not just about drugs or blood tests. It's about faith. And, and yeah, don't get me wrong, medicine is good. I personally have had about nine operations in my life, including for bowel cancer. You know, I'm a believer. In, in, in medicine, but also it has its role, but we, it mustn't go beyond its role in determining our future lives. God does that, that's his job. And we cannot take that away from him. Doctors would be fools. Any doctor that says it's all about us. Well, I think most doctors are wise enough not to say that. Um, but if, you know, for me, if I was off an Alzheimer's test, I personally would say no, for the reasons I've said tonight. And that may well not be true for other people. And I'm very happy to, to discuss it further. Thank you. I have some thoughts. <laughs> Funny enough, I thought you might have. <laughs> hey, well, the first one that comes to mind, actually, which just popped into my head. When we were pregnant uh, with our children, you go for a scan of so many weeks in, and they say, yes, here's your child. Okay, you're going to be due at this time. And it's, it's a very, very sort of, uh, you know, exciting time as you're looking forward to the baby being born. And then they offer you another scan where they say, well, you might have a child with Down syndrome or not, and that's later on. And we had an argument with, I think it was a midwife saying, we don't want that scan. And they got very, very aggressive with us. You need to have this scan. And we say, we don't need the scan because irrespective of the result, it's not going to change our action. Mm -hmm. And that's what comes to mind with this. And the problem is if you start going down the road of, I mean, that's, that's has a child got Down syndrome for us as Christians. Well, we don't care. We, we value the life of the child. So there's no point in having a test because it's not going to dictate anything. And we knew it's not 100% guaranteed anyway. It's a possibility or a probability. And well, when you start getting to living your life around a possibility or a probability, all of a sudden you're living your life in the future for something. I'll tell you the scripture does come to my mind uh, in Peter, I think it was, where it said, uh, don't go to this city and that city saying you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Conversely, don't say you're not going to go here and you're not going to do that because you can't read the future. So that, that's really what strikes me. And I think that idea of fear that you mentioned, that's what really troubles me. We've got a mental health crisis everywhere, but this is just going to be a mental health crisis for older people because they might have something which we probably can't do anything about, which they're going to live their life and effectively almost bring it on sooner because they're now living their life anticipating something which may not happen because they might not live that long, in which case, what was all the worry about? Now, Heather, I might say, when I talked to her about this, she said, well, then don't forget there's an alternative view, which is say you do the test and you get a bad result. You then say, she might say, well, she said that some people might think, well, in that case, I need to, you know, give it all up now, stop working, go and hold it the whole time, uh, you know, live life while you can. Um, and that, that's I understand as well. But I, I'm not sure how compatible that is with, with faith, because actually God's got stuff for us to do. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think just being completely hedonistic, having done the test is also, um, dare I say, not... Uh, not God's best plan for for our lives. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it, it raises a lot of questions, this test, and you're quite right. There's no point in doing a test. In fact, the general principle of medicine is you, you do any test, not just because it's nice to know, because you're going to treat the result. That is a general principle that we, that, that we work on. So if, if people come to me as a GP and say, I'd like to have a CAT scan, why is that? Well, because I'd like to know. I said, that's not a good enough reason, I'm afraid. You know, if, if I think that there's a need to do a CAT scan because we're concerned about a particular disease, sure, that's different. But you don't just do a test because it would be nice. Because apart from the else, life can change. Six months later, do you have another test because it would be nice? You know, that's, that, that's not how medicine is. We're not, you know, that's just 
four. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that this this test, and, and there will be others, you know, with an ethical angle. As you say, in the past, people used to have to have what was called amniocentesis, oh, taking cool. a bit of the amniotic fluid around the baby, you know, to know whether it's, the baby's got Downs. And, um, you know, I've known people who said, I don't want that test. A, because there was a 1% chance of causing a miscarriage. Um, and B, because I'm going to have the baby anyway. So no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, and I think, yeah, well, well done. Well done. Yeah, I, I get your wife's point. If I know that I've got 15 years, I'm going to make the most of those 15 years. Well, you might do for a year or two, but I don't think any of us would be able to sustain that level of energetic living for 15 years, because maybe for a couple of years, you'd be okay. But when you're hitting five years and 10 years, you're thinking, well, I've only got five years left. And you're either going to go into self-destruct mode of really living life and doing really stupid, reckless things. Um, and what is that? I, I don't know. It's, it's the idea of we don't know what's coming tomorrow. And if we're living our life 15 years in the future, we've got a big problem. No, you're, you're absolutely right. We, we, we do not know. And the, and the parable of the rich fool, you know, filling up his barn, and then God saying, you know, tonight, your life is required of you. We, sim yeah. we simply don't know. Now, to be fair, in those 10 or 15 years, if you lived life you know, philanthropically and gave you money to the poor and worked for mission agencies and things, well, th that's very good. But then one can argue, hang on a second, shouldn't we all be thinking those ways, asking God, okay, look, you know, what point do you want me to stop work? If it's 50 because you've got other plans, fine. Um, and that's a conversation I have with them as I'm approaching retirement. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> I want to make the most of whatever time you give me on this earth, but I don't want it to be dictated by fear. Uh, I want it to be dictated by by God and hopefully me hearing what he has to say. Mm. The other one that uh, I read about was people who, I think there's a Golden Gate Bridge in the US, and when people who've jumped to commit suicide, there are a number of them that don't die. And the one thing that struck me really hard was so many of them said, as soon as I let go, I knew it was a mistake. But they actually got a second chance, which of course many of those suicide attempts don't get that. And it's that idea of, yes, we could know but but also we, let's not forget we have a miraculous god yes we worship a miraculous god he's done something miraculous on my best friends in terms of his paraproteins in myeloma recently you know we mustn't forget you can get a, a positive diagnosis you know 97 percent chance of getting alzheimer's that doesn't in any way stop god from working no <laughs> might even encourage him who knows we don't know his mind but um you know it's we mustn't think well this is the be all and end all absolutely not just as any disease is not the be all and it's a starting point to say to the Lord, Lord, here I am, please step in. I think the other thing that's interesting, though, is it's kind of, it, OK, you do the test and it comes about, right, you, you've got the high probability you're going to have Alzheimer's in 15 years. It's, you know, 2030, so 2045, I'm going to have Alzheimer's. In 2044, uh -huh. what life are you going to have? Yeah, yeah. Because anything could happen. But I mean, our, our friend Steve Lick, who was given yes. a number of weeks to, to live, he is still alive and kicking um, when doctors said he wouldn't be. And he's just got on with living. Yeah, we both get texts, don't we, from 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 Becca, his wife. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that good. The scan's clear. Oh, look, he's on holiday. He's skiing. Um, yeah. Shouldn't he be in a box? Uh, yeah. Yes, but he's not, is he? Because it's not doctors that determine these things. It's God. The scripture Fantastic. That, yeah, the, the scripture that comes back to me again was, for I know the, the plans I have for you. You know, God ordains the steps of our lives. And if you spend the next 15 years with a guaranteed, I'm going to get Alzheimer's, one, you don't know that you will, even if a test says you will, because there's never 100% anything. Two, it's cutting out the opportunity for God to heal you. Three, why are we writing off people with Alzheimer's? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's sure. the other question that comes to mind. A very good point. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just bring it up. We, mm. we like hot topics. Actually, what's amazing about this show is the number of hot every week there seems <laughs> to be something that's cropping up. I, you know, it's not like I go looking for it. These things find me <laughs> in the <laughs> newspaper, on the on the TV. Uh, yeah, they're just, oh, look, there it is. Oh, my goodness. We need to talk about that. And then it gives me a bit of um, a yeah, chance to do a little bit of work. And it's 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 amazing how, how much stuff is out there. But I think the great thing is to think about stuff, mm. you know, actually knowledge, which the other thing that Proverbs says is really helpful. Um, yeah, not knowledge without God, because that's foolishness and it leads to arrogance and pride. But knowledge alongside, you know, as part of wisdom, part of uh, faith is really handy. So, you know, we, we need to know what's out there, but we also need to know as Christians how to respond. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. I love it. Um, it is a delicate subject for some people. You might be suffering from somebody who's got uh, dementia, Alzheimer's in your family, and we appreciate and respect that. 
Um, and like you said, there are some drugs which can offer some help. And just for my own sake of uh, understanding this, you said there are things that can delay onset. Are there things that can diminish the symptoms of Alzheimer's? Well, these, what these drugs are doing is, is giving you, a, a, well, the current drug, Aricept, gives you six months longer um, of sort of disease-free progression. It's reducing the progression of the disease. Uh, that, that's putting it better. So it's, it's, not re it's certainly not a cure. It just means it's pushing down the line um, the symptoms that would have occurred a little earlier. That's where we are at the moment. Now, it looks like these new drugs will be better. Otherwise, there'd be no great excitement if they were no better than the current uh, drugs. So that's great. Uh, the 20%, I'm not sure if that's, you know, you live 20% longer or 20% less severe. That we're not quite sure about at the moment. Um, and either way, that's great, but it's still only 20%. It's not 100. And of course, we pray that you know, the, the clever scientists will find better drugs. Um, and I'm all for drugs that reduce and, and ultimately cure disease. And obviously, as a doctor, it's just one in knowing in advance something that at a moment isn't curable, especially how devastating the disease can be mentally. Mm, I'm not sure it's a good idea. Mm. No, I think I'm with you. I can understand people who might want that, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not convinced that knowing is really worthwhile unless they're, unless we can say, right, okay, you, you've got Alzheimer's. Okay, here's a drug. Take this in 10 years and you'll never get Alzheimer's. Okay, then then there's some value to having that knowledge. Uh, a friend of ours had a, a really strange heart condition. He, his heart just stopped in the middle of the night and he died. And they discovered that it was something about his heart. His sons had the same thing. So they were tested and they, they, can, they can actually do something. So they have, I think, special monitors at nighttime and they have drugs and stuff. But unless there's, you know, a cure, mm. how helpful is that knowledge? Mm. And I would say it's, it's likely, well, quite in many people's cases, perhaps not all, but in many people's cases, unhelpful. Mm. I would agree with you. Yeah, we'll see what, you'll, see what your listeners say. <laughs> well, yeah, this is interesting, wasn't it? It's going to be a hot topic for sure. Um, if you've got any questions for uh, Dr. Scott, you can send them. And your thoughts on Alzheimer's, would you take, the, uh, would you take that test and discover that you're going to be probably, possibly have Alzheimer's in maybe 15 years' time or not? Would you want to know? That's worth asking. Um, get in touch with us here in the studio. Hello at pure247radio.org. Hello at pure247radio.org. Sending your thoughts and any questions for Dr. Richard Scott, GP. Thank you so much for covering this one. And leave my pleasure, as ever. Mm. We, we, we will. Um, yes, this is an interesting one, isn't it? <laughs>